Hey, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and this code is really simple. So what's wrong with it? Well, it's a little bit telling about some bad design that can lead through your code base, specifically just this condition in and of itself, and more importantly, that operator, that single character. So follow me down the rabbit hole of this very simple example. It's just a tiny if, but how we can improve upon it to a better design. Instead, I've added a comparison to false. And you might be thinking, okay, that's ridiculous. It's the exact same thing. It is the same thing. Same behavior compiles to the same thing. But it's what I like to call scannability. For me, that single operator can get lost in dense code. Your style guide might say, no, we absolutely use the operator and you have no issue using it. That's fine. But let's keep going down the rabbit hole. Which is Boolean blindness. So regardless of whether you're using the operator, comparison to false, I have order dot is valid. Is valid can mean anything. What does it mean exactly? That the order's in a valid state? Okay, What I'm, when I'm writing code that I need to know if I can ship it out, is it's valid so then I can ship it? Or that the product is available? Or that the shipping address is correct? What does is valid mean? Hide away the how and get the what front and center. This goes back to scannability. Is when I'm looking from the call site, I wanna see explicitly what the condition is. When you're looking at your caller code, it should read like a book. Before I get to how, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real time business critical data with historical context and fine grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. So the caller it should read like a book, scannability. The order, if it's available for free shipping, we wanna do free shipping. Otherwise, we'll get to add a fee, but this is backward. It's not reading like a book. I don't want that first condition, if it has an else, to be the false. This should be totally flipped around. I don't want this at all this way. This doesn't read like a book. Now it does. Now I love capturing in code the essence of the domain and using that language, but it's very difficult over time as things evolve, as your understanding evolves, as the domain and things change within the business to keep these things in sync. It absolutely is a trade-off and a thing that you'll probably experience where they get unsynced, where you then have maybe old terminology that you used once used that now you may call something else. So something to consider. While Boolean blindness is about meaning, sometimes the problem isn't meaning, but rather you have a complex domain where you're trying to capture multiple different states but forcing it down a true false, and it just doesn't fit. My example here is the account is active. Is it active? Is the account suspended? Has the account been closed or banned? If you imagine you have all these different properties to try to represent the combination of states that it's in, how are you checking for all this? Really, again, the same thing applies. Be explicit about the state you're in. Make various state transitions explicit. Make it impossible to get into an invalid state. So while I could use something like an enum to find the state of the account, whether it's active, closed, or suspended, and I wanna check something based on that, whether they could post the message, I still don't actually wanna do this. I actually wanna go back to what we were doing before and making it very explicit and capturing that logic around the invariance that we wanna perform for the specific action. And if you worked in a complex domain, you know it isn't this simple of just checking some state. It's much worse than that. Likely a long list of conditionals that you need to check to perform some type of operation. It can become almost unreadable. Now, while this example is still simple, you do really need to look at it a little bit. So the condition here is that if the user's inactive or that they don't have permission to billing, then we're gonna deny them access. And this is where I find specifications helpful, especially if you need to reuse them or compose them together. So instead I've created a specification that I can use to capture that logic. So I have my billing access and I'm just checking to see if it's satisfied by that user. My billing access has that logic. Is the user active and do they have the permission? What you've done is just create a policy as an object that you can reuse, inject, pass around. It's very testable and you have one singular place that has that logic, but there's trade-offs indirection and you'll know i hate indirection for useless reasons so if it's going to be something reusable and it's more complex because if it's very very simple this can be way overkill now while i started off with a simple operator and simple code really what i was getting at is making your code read like a book from the call site to do that you need to be giving things meaningful names representing your objects and state in a meaningful way and using building blocks to capture the essence of what that 
the business rules and complex rules are. So it's comment time, my favorite time. Get in the comments to let me know some of your tips or some of the things that you've seen that make you shake your head or you think that's a really great idea. Get in the comments. Thank you to everybody that supports my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you wanna join my channel, the link's in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software, architecture, and design. Thanks.